So hi everybody and welcome to our Row You Pack. This is our eighth pack, can you believe it? It's been quite a few packs since March. Um, I'm really, really excited about this pack. Um, it's something a little bit different um, and I hope you really enjoy it. So I'd like to introduce our artist of the month, who is Mika Hartland. So hi Mika, how are you? Hi, hi there. Hi Mika. Hello. So, um, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, Mika. What type of uh, practitioner are you? I was I was born in New Zealand, so I'm born and bred Kiwi. Uh, and I grew up in New Zealand and I went to fashion school. So I did three years at university doing fashion design and textiles. And then my parents were both very creative. My mum particularly used to sew, my aunties used to sew. So I've always had a love of sewing. So I used to try and make my own clothes. I used to work at a, a fabric store and the ladies there would always laugh because I would just pick up fabric from the um, remnants bin and tie it around and put a stitch here and they would always say, you can't wear that, it's not beautifully made. But I would just throw things on and loved new fabrics, playing with fabrics. Uh, and after my design school, I went on and became a teacher. So I did one year of postgraduate diploma and became a teacher. And then now over here back in England, I came over to work in England to teach and worked at a primary school and then moved on teaching art and textiles. And then had a few years out while well, I had three children and now I've just gone back into teaching technology. But yeah. Amazing. It's a really interesting journey you've had there, Mika. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel very blessed that it's been very fortunate that I can have travelled and work in a different country and experience two different cultures, but mm -hmm. both working. So yeah. Fantastic. So um, you're saying that your family links kind of got you into sewing. Do you think that was important? Do you think um, it was something that influenced you? Yes, definitely. In New Zealand, the culture there is very much about creative, being creative, making do with what you've got. It's also very fashionable to try things that are different. So you want to have clothes that are different. So friends, when we were 18, 19, we'd pop to the local charity shop and pick up clothing and then we'd chop it up and make outfits to wear out that night and it was seen as something quite interesting whereas I think it's these days more people want to look the same but it was very much a culture over there where you want to try new things practice new things so people all had different machines or would try printing or knitting or all different sorts of things growing up so you're definitely part of my culture brilliant um, so what is it about making that you love? What is it that inspires you? I think particularly for me, I love seeing something that's flat, like a flat piece of fabric or when I was getting things organized for this particular craft pack, it was exciting. All the different bits and pieces arrived and to know that you can take something and make it into something beautiful. When I was at design school, while the girls around me were, buying in this amazing fabric I wanted to try something a little bit different and I most of my final pieces were made out of canvas or calico and then I was printing so I was printing all different sorts of all just using whites and silvers and greys on top of calico but I like the fact that you can take different elements that can in their own right be quite boring or unusual or old or um, like as I said charity shop clothes and cut them up and then make something that's it's new and exciting. Also, on a funny note, things, there was a film Sound of Music and the lady didn't have any money. So she took all the curtains down and she made all the children outfits out of these curtains. And I love, I love that. I love how you can take something out of nothing. Mm. And it brings people pleasure. It's exciting. Uh, I do a lot of teaching now, particularly children, and there's nothing more exciting when a kid walks out having made their own sweatshirt and they've printed their name across or they've taken a bit of scraps from fabric I've got and they've made themselves a scrunchie or something that, that they can do themselves. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Oh, perfect. That sounds amazing. So Mika, it seems like you have quite a lot of skills that are quite um, highly developed skills. Is learning a new skill and finding out how to make something 
something that you always have to do. You have to keep upskilling yourself. Um, and do you find that a good thing? Yeah, absolutely. It's very easy to say static and just use the skills that I've got. But for many reasons, I enjoy learning new things. A, because it adds new elements to my business <laughs> that I can then teach other people. Um, a good example, I, I bought a cry cut machine. Actually, it's a machine you can see just here. I bought it about a year ago, but it was too complicated to understand how to use it. I just didn't have time. So it wasn't until I met this lovely girl who I was teaching how to sew. She was going through some difficult times. She wasn't coming out of her house. And her, she came with her mum, and she was able to slowly start. She was very talented, but didn't socialise. And slowly but surely, um, she would come to their sewing classes and as we started chatting I worked out that she was incredible with this cry cut machine. So I went up into my loft and pulled it down and she was able to help me use it and since then she's popped over a few times so rather than me being the teacher she's taught me. But it's having this, um, having this machine it's been able to, my kids I buy t-shirts from my kids from the supermarket and they design their own t-shirts uh, but I do lots of labeling of people's um, presents or when the girls come in, they make pencil cases and they can put their names on. Just like you'll notice in your pack, you've got some writing across yours. This is from this machine. Um, but also I find if I'm open to talk to people and listen to people, people out there have got so many skills that they can teach me. So I may think that I've got this amazing bank of everything I need, but it's not until I stop and I chat to people about some things they've been doing I pick up new things and new skills. Uh, a friend of mine actually is a, a sewing teacher as well. And once a month we try and get together. And although I'm always teaching and she's always teaching, we try and get together and make things for ourselves, which doesn't happen. But I'm always learning new things. She'll try things in a different way. I'm a bit more haphazard creative and she's very organized and strategic. So we've both got different skills that we can teach each other. But unless we, stop listening then i won't i won't learn new things amazing so um it's interesting that you meet up with a friend to motivate you to make some things for yourself mm. um, yes think, absolutely it's too easy just to yeah. be doing for everybody else but yeah. sometimes it's nice to do things for yourself so do you think there is that like a link between making and well-being do you think it's important oh. to make Without a doubt, one of my favourite things to do, I run classes for children, which is, which is great, and it's, like I said, about building people's confidence. But before lockdown was on, I run um, evenings for, for ladies, and often these are women who are either isolated or on the other spectrum, incredibly busy, and they spend their life looking after the children, their husbands, their family, the neighbours. So they would come once a week or once a fortnight with their friends, and they'd come and have a glass of wine and we would, um, or a hot drink, and I would provide some nibbles and they would come and make something. They would go away with uh, a new cushion or a new bag or, and actually what's been amazing is that it's something that they've said, they come away and they've switched off. Mm. So for a whole evening, they've done nothing but just think about this craft. And the other thing they like doing is, I really love making memory bears where I take lots of old pieces of clothing uh, that have a special memory for someone and then I create a, a teddy bear or a bunny and I, I run evenings where people can come and bring their special memories. There was a lady once who had a bundle of clothing, she must have been in her late 60s and she had brought with her her penny when she was at primary school, her, her part of her wedding dress, her mother's nighty, um, her grandmother's apron and she would brought all these pieces together and each of them, you know, she made an ear with one and an arm. And actually, it was a chance that she, she didn't do very many creative things. But by coming together as a group, everybody, and then some people brought their, or their baby grows. Yeah. And they could come and then, and the individual steps, I always say, anyone can sew. If you can sew a straight line, you can sew. And it's about one straight line, and then another straight line, and then a couple of curved lines. And then you've got something, but it's just about keep working towards, even when it's hard or challenging or difficult, coming together as a group, which is great, but also keep trying and keep making mistakes and keep unpicking. And, and that's what I really loved. I forgot on your original question, but
but that's what I really love about people coming together is that they can work through things and it switches off from whatever they're going through and they can come and create something out of nothing. Perfect. I think you have answered my original question. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> you answered it perfectly. Oh, Mika, what's that in the background there? Is that one of the um, bears that you've made? Yeah, so there's a couple there actually. Um, oh, these ones. This is a memory bear made out of children's onesies. So I either do it for people or people come and do it themselves. Sometimes it's part of the process. I've had a lady who's come and uh, lost a baby. So she's bought the onesies that she had and it was just part of, for her, it was part of her process of um, making something that she could remember her, her child by. So this, is, this is called Freckles uh, and every now and then if I can't find them, my children have stolen it because it's all soft. Um, and this is one I've made recently, uh, it hasn't got a mouth yet, but this lady, this is her scarf and her, um, her husband's trousers and her husband's t-shirt, her husband passed away and her auntie passed away. And then that's her auntie's dressing gown and her auntie's scarf. And so it's just, it's mainly for the grandkids really, but it's a way of keeping a memory alive. So I find it, I find it's a real privilege because often the conversations that come up when people are having these consultations and she passing me on their clothing, it's, I, I find it quite emotional really that you've been entrusted with these. Um, but I also find it quite hard because you could have, I did five last week out of the same clothing, but uh, they all look so different and it's really hard because obviously everything's handmade. Um, but there's some pictures on my Facebook page if you want to, yeah, so yeah. So I'm really looking forward to the pack that we're going to be making this month. What type of pack is it, Mika, that you've designed for us? So you are all going to be making a Hope Heart. So you have a pom-pom, a tassel, and it's a fabric felt heart with the words hope. Now, in my pack, you will have a set of instructions, okay, with lots of pictures, and hopefully it's set out. Now, I've showed you step by step how to do a type of stitch called a blanket stitch. But really, if you just want to go in and out and in and out and in and out, you're welcome to. So in your pack, you will have a needle. You will have a full cotton reel. So hopefully that might be useful uh, to inspire you to sew up any other holes or anything else you've got laying around the house. Uh, I've hardly got any tea towels because if I ever run out of fabric, I just use my tea towels to make all sorts of things like peg bags or pencil cases. So yeah, so you've got a needle and a thread. They're all different sorts of colors. You've got some are red, some are pink, some are white, some are blue, and I've got a myriad of pom different colour pom poms, white. So all the packs will be different. So when you uh, get together with your friends, you can all compare and contrast what different colours. So I've gone for things that are nice and bright. And the idea is that it's a gift that you can give to someone, the gift of hope, to tell them that what we're going through now isn't always going to be like this. And it's a gift to remind them that you love them and you care for them and that there's something that's going to be different this time next year. So yeah, hopefully there's any, and there's lots of different bits and pieces that you might be able to use afterwards as well. Oh, it sounds absolutely amazing. I love that. So um, is the word printed on there? Is that from your machine? How you've... Yeah, so this is a vinyl print. Okay. So what happens is I plug it into my machine, I type the font, and then I plug it into this machine here, and then it prints out onto whatever vinyl I choose. It's a cutter, sorry, not a printer. It cuts out the words. And then I peel off the backing. Uh, so for instance, there's some that I've already peeled the backing off. Okay, and then I've got a heat press, which is this machine here and that irons the letters on. So when it first cuts it, it comes in a nice big sheet like this. And as you can see, I've started peeling off some of the letters of hope. There's gold, and then that there will then get heat pressed onto your heart. But that will all be done for you. So when they arrive, they will be 
two pieces of felt and then your job is to sew around the outside, include the hook, sew the pom-pom and the tassel on and then hang it up. So um, that looks amazing Mika, thank you so much for being thank our you. artist of the month and creating a pack for us for our Wo You group. Um, as always, we will be sharing our creations on our WhatsApp group and our Facebook group so everybody can see what we've made. Um, and we will be inviting Mika to join us on both of those groups for the next month. So Thank you. I really, I've heard such amazing things of all the different things you've created. So thank you so much for inviting me along. Looks like fun. Oh, it's great to have you. Great to have you. So. Um, We'll look forward to adding you onto the groups. I'm sure you'll have a bit of chat for us all on there. And any questions, I'll be on, I'll be listening. Any questions you've got about sewing or help with anything you want, any questions you've got, just feel free to ask and I'll see, I'll try my best and see if I can help you with anything. Oh, thank you so much. That's lovely. It's always nice to have the artist on the, the group chats just for the time when the packs go out and when everybody's getting going with them. So if there's any technical issues, there's always somebody at hand to uh, answer the questions. Oh, and a word of hint. If you do have children at home, sometimes they are better at threading needles than we are. <laughs> because as we get old, I've tried to buy needles with big holes, but sometimes getting the thread through the hole is quite hard. So just get the kids because they've got better eyesight than us. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so um, that's it really for our, our chat. So. Ladies, please share everything that you make with us on the WhatsApp or the Facebook group. Um, and we look forward to seeing your creations. Take care, everybody. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mika. Mika. See you later. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.